Hello and welcome to the Online Lesson Educators. Today we will be learning how to recognize the place value of each digit in a three digit number. We will be using hundreds, tens, and ones. So let's get learning. When trying to understand place value, knowing how to use a place value chart or table will certainly help you. So, what is a place value chart? It is a chart that has columns that represent a specific place value. If you look at the following example, it has three columns. As we are only working with three digits today, the first column is labelled H for the hundreds value, T for the tens value and O for the ones value. Writing numbers into a place value chart helps you understand the value of each digit as well as keeping each digit in the correct place. So, why is place value important? Well, place value helps you understand the meaning and order of numbers. Take a look. If we draw a place value chart and place these numbers under each value, it explains exactly that. Let's use the place value chart again. We will use the number 564. What does this mean for each individual digit? Well, using the chart we can see that we have five hundreds or 500, six tens or 60, and then four ones or four. Let's try another one. 709. Now we know that we have seven hundreds or 700. Now take note and see that we have zero tens. Now we still write zero as a placeholder. Otherwise, we wouldn't understand the number. So we still need to write zero tens. And then we are left with nine ones or nine, giving us the number 709. Now, let's practice saying a really fancy mathematical term. It's called partitioning. Can you repeat it after me? Partitioning. As knowing the place value of each number is so important, we need to be able to partition the numbers to find out the value of each individual digit. This is an extremely important mathematical skill. So, using partitioning, let's start with an easy one, shall we? 65. Let's partition this number. The 6 is in the tens column, so we know this represents 60. 60 plus the 5 that is in the ones column, which represents 5 ones, meaning we just bring that number down. We do not need to change this. So 60 plus 5 equals 65. Okay, let's try doing this the opposite way. 90 plus 2 equals. Let's put these already partitioned numbers on our place value chart. Pause the video here if you want to work it out for yourself first. 90 is the same as 9 tenths, so we write 9 in the tens column. Then, we bring the 2 into the 1's column. This equals 92. OK, let's try a slightly more difficult one, shall we? 736. Let's partition this number. Once again, pause the video here 
if you would like to try it yourself first. Recognize the seven is in the hundreds column, so it represents seven hundreds. We write this as seven hundred, seven zero zero. The three is in the tens column, so it represents three tens, which we write as three zero thirty. Six is in the ones column. This represents six ones, and we write this simply as six. Altogether, seven hundred add thirty add six equals seven hundred and thirty-six. Well done. Okay, let's try one more together. Three hundred and nine. Let's partition this number. Now the three is in the hundreds column, so again it represents three hundreds. We write this down as three hundred or three zero zero. Now zero is in the tens column, and once again, like earlier, this means there isn't any tens, but we still need to make sure that we put a zero in the place value chart as a placeholder. Otherwise, we wouldn't understand or be able to read the number correctly. Now the nine is in the ones column. This represents nine ones, which we simply write as nine. Altogether, three hundred plus the zero in the tens column plus the nine gives us the number 309. I think you are ready to move on. Now, we are going to look at some numbers. Each number will have one of their digits underlined. I wonder, can you work out the underlined digits place value? Remember, use the place value chart and pause the video here to work it out for yourself. Are you ready to check your answers? The first one was 625 and the digit underlined was 2. So, 2 is in the tens column. So what does it represent? That's right, 2 tens or 20. Okay, the next number we gave you was 786 and we underlined the 6. So using our place value chart identify what column the 6 is in and that's correct it's in the ones column so the 6 for this number is equal to 6 ones or 6. The next number was 905 and we've underlined the number 9. It's the same process again, identifying which column the 9 is in. And that's correct, it's in the hundreds column. So that 9 is equal to 9 hundreds or 900. The next number we gave you was 612. And we underlined the 1. As you can see, it's placed in the tens column. So that one is actually equal to one ten or ten. And the last number we gave you was 111. Now you needed to be very careful with this because each column has the number one. But the one that is underlined is the number one that is placed in the hundreds column. So that is actually worth 100 or 100. So, as a challenge, try writing the value of all the other digits that are not underlined and see if you can tell us the value of each of those. Okay, 
we think you are ready for the ultimate extra challenge. We would like you to use your place value knowledge to add the following numbers together mentally. Of course, you may use your place value chart to help you if needed. You can do this and believe us, you are great at maths. If you would like to pause the video as you calculate the following, of course, feel free to do so. We will then talk you through each of the following equations. Okay, hopefully you paused the video and gave yourself plenty of time to complete each of the problems we provided for you. Now, for the first question, it was 133 plus 300. Now, 300 is very important as there are no tens or no ones in that number. So you know that only the hundreds column is going to change. We are adding a further 300 to the number 133. So that gives us 433. Next, you were provided with 467 plus 20. Now, the 20 is important because we can see that there are no ones in 20. So the 7 from 467 will stay the same in your total answer. But note, when you look at the tens column, because you are adding two more tens, 20, 467 will become 487 because the 6 at the 2 from the tens column equals 8. And then the hundreds column, the 4 remains the same. So 467 plus 20 equals 487. And for the next question, we had 100 plus 72. Now take note, in the number 72, we have two ones, and we have seven tens, or 70, which we are adding to the number 100. So in the ones column, you know it will end with a two. We have seven tens in the seven columns, and we are left with the 100. So 100 plus 72 equals 172. Okay, and for your last super challenging question, you had 361 plus 9. Now, what's important to note is, in the number 361, you already have 1 in the 1's column, and then you are adding another 9 ones to it. So the 9 plus the 1 gives you an extra 10. So instead of 60 from 361, you are now going to have 70, because 61 plus 9 is 70. And there are no hundreds to add on other than the 300 you already had in the number 361. So 361 plus 9 equals 370. So well done for challenging yourself and trying to complete those. Okay, and that's it from the online lesson educators today. We hope you've had fun recognizing the place value of each digit in a three-digit number. If you have any questions, don't forget to comment below, subscribe, and give us a big old thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Remember, always believe in yourself and never give up.